Hello, hi, this is another tutorial on silk painting. Now we've already covered drawing on silk and using and applying gutter. So today we're ready for the silk paints. So you can see this is a, a new dragon that I did, I finished off the other day. So today we're going to be applying the actual silk paints themselves. Now just to show you, silk paints are extremely runny. They're very, very watery. So a little bit goes a long way. Okay, so we're gonna start off obviously with clean water and a clean brush. Now, depending on the sort of silk painting you're doing, I tend to do small work generally, then you're, you're gonna be looking at a range of small brushes. So we've got a one brush, obviously the smaller the number, the smaller the brush. The one I'll be using a lot of today is a two, that's slightly bigger. And then the smaller ones here. Now a two zero means it's a double zero basically. And then we've got a four zero, which is four times zero. So that's a very fine brush. And then the very finest brush of all, here we go, which is a 10 times zero. That's about as fine as you can get on the market. And that's the really tiny little details that you want to get into. But for today, mostly I'm going to be using a two, which is still pretty, pretty small. So we'll start off. I have already mixed some of the colors that I want. Um, the lovely thing about silk painting is watching it spread and you can decide on the effects that you want as you go along. Okay, so we're going to start off here. I'm doing sort of a, a nice fiery dragon today. So we're going to start off with some fiery colours and you literally just have to touch the silk lightly and it will spread. Now you've got the gutter on there which I did yesterday. I tend to give it a whole day to dry out, but eight hours should be enough. Okay, that starts to spread. Now, I'm gonna bring in a little bit of red. And you can see just the merest touch and it starts to spread. There's something wonderfully relaxing about silk painting. It just moves along the silk. The handy hint is not to overload your brush. If you overload your brush, then you're gonna run the risk of the silk paint bleeding over the edge of the gutter because it's got too much, too much paint on it. There we go, I'm quite liking that. Okay, let's move down to here. So we've got a red now. Again, merest touch and you can see the paint spreading. Now what you'll notice when you're doing this is that lighter colours often push back darker colours. It's the opposite to what you expect. There you go. I'll put some little red in here. Bring some up here. There we go. The lightest touch. Now I'm going to wash my brush out. Also use some kitchen towel uh, just to get the excess water off the brush. Also handy to have, as well as a kitchen towel, is often a small sponge like this. You can use that for all sorts of effects. We will do another tutorial on effects, and I'll show you how to make some really interesting effects using sponging and also salt crystals. But for today, we'll just keep it just as some basics. Now I've got a, a deeper red here, which I'm gonna start introducing. There we go, and that just brings it alive a little bit more. Again, you don't need much on your brush and you can watch it spread and decide really as you're doing it how you want it to go. Okay, that's not too bad at all there. I think I'll do that down there. Keep that a darker red colour I think. There we go, okay. Now if you do get some bleeding, I've got a little bit of bleeding here, you can see here just where it's popped over the gutter. Now usually that means there's either a, a gap in the gutter or I did exactly what I said not to, which is a good example though. I overloaded my brush, that's fine. Because he's a fiery dragon today, I actually don't mind that. I'm gonna be using some of these yellows and oranges. Bring that down there, bring that up there. You can do all sorts. You can, as long as you're doing it when the when the paint is still wet, you can uh, you can affect all sorts of changes. I'm going to bring that now up here a little bit, and you'll see it start to bleed in. Again, when these are wet, you can do all sorts of amazing 
effects with them and they are fantastic for blending so I think I'm going to go for an orange, a slightly darker orange here bring that round here there you go but it really is the merest touch and you get the effects that you want I want a darker one up there there you go, let that blend in if you find you're getting lines and you don't want them then just literally touch it up with a tiny little bit of the darker colour and that will just get a little bit more than that and that will just erase any lines that you don't want there we go, so I want that a little bit more blended in than that okay you do have to have a relatively steady hand um, I mean, silk painting is very forgiving if you make mistakes. You just have to address those mistakes pretty quickly after, before the silk dries. So I'm, I'm happy with that. I shall leave that for there. I shall start working on another colour now. I've got a lovely gold I've been working on here. Now that gold is quite nice to add in to the light orange that we had on the horns. Again, I'm going to bring that up. That's one of my dogs stretching. Yes, it's always handy to make sure you're doing it in an environment where you're not going to be knocked. There we go. And then you can keep on darkening that or lightening it as you want. Uh, I've got a, I just wash my brush out here. I've got a white here. Now, there we go. I'm going to add this white just to show you some of the different effects you can have. Now, just to give it a highlight. And the white will push back some of those darker colours. So if you want a sort of a highlight on a bone or something, something that's poking out. I'm going to do a little bit, little bit on this horn as well. Just to bring out areas of it. There you go. The paints will change colour slightly when they dry. But I mean, again, this is why I use uh, PBO Setter Silks because they've got a really good high density saturation of colour. So they don't change as much as others. So it is always important to get a, a good quality silk paint. Uh, Marabou is also good. This is, a, this is Marabou, which I also use. But PPO is probably my, my favourite. Right, I'll do a little bit more around here. I'm going to bring some more red in. Again, you can be quite free with this. Main thing is not to overload your brush. I'm going to have a little bit of a darker red here, a bit more here. Let's bring that down there. There we go. It's very, very satisfying to see the colours merge and blend and you can start to bring in other tones so I'm gonna there we go I'm gonna deeper red now so I'm gonna just bring that deeper red in if you do think you've overloaded your brush at all just give it a wipe on the back of your hand or on a kitchen towel there we go there that's what I want darker colour here just starting to come in and you can see how easily it spreads. Go. So it's always, it's actually a very, once you've done the gutter, which actually is the hardest part, having a steady hand to draw your outlines with, the actual silk painting itself is actually pretty easy. So I'm gonna wash my brush out again. There we go. Now I'm gonna bring in, I've got some greenish tones here which I want to bring in, there we go, just there is a slightly green, I'm going to watch that mix, there we go, I'm going to bring that down there, and I'm going to wash my brush out again, make sure the brush isn't too watery, and then, okay, I've got a squeaky chair today, so, okay, there we go, let's get a little bit, there we go, deeper colour in here. There we go, that's what I want. And I can start to fill out 
the spaces that you've left with the gut and let's let let's have that meet the uh, the red let's have that mix a little bit there we go that's what we want a lot of silk painting when you first start out is experimentation finding out what works for you and what doesn't what you like and what you don't so I quite want I want a fiery dragon but I do want those green tones in there so I quite like that there you go now for a deeper deeper green I've already mixed a, almost a viridian green over here so I'm going to add little sections of that and just let that do its magic there we go Again, less is more when it comes to the amount of paint on your brush. The last thing you want to do is swamp it with colour, because that just won't work. 